speaking to Robbie Fenter, the CEO of Ultron. Let's focus on that succession planning for a little while. You've got two girls. Yeah. There's no son to succeed you. Yeah. As, as CEO, have you given that much thought? Oh, I, I, w I would think a, a lady would be eminently qualified to run our group as, as well as a, as a male. So, um, you know, f from that perspective, no, there's no in the in in, in my uh, marriage. There's no there's no sons. There are some sons in my in my in my sister's marriage, and uh, and my brother's also married. So something may come come about uh, over there as well. So um, I, I guess there could be. Fenter family boys in the in the succession planning mix. Um, my father also has from his second marriage. He's got two sons uh, that are in their early to mid twenties right now. Um, both are uh, involved somewhat indirectly with the with the group, um, and and have also got some uh, some aspirations in in the future and to play a bigger role within the group. But I think what we need to do is is really. Make sure that regardless of whether it's a family member or not a family member, the succession planning um, has to be that the best person to run the group um, is, is, is put in place for the, for the shareholders. So um, that, that's really the, the overarching succession planning uh, uh, process that we would need would to follow. Would you like to see your daughters involved in the, in the family business? Oh, absolutely. It, uh, you know, the, uh, we're in the second generation of the family business now, uh, with my dad having founded the business in 1965. And um, you know, I think it's every family's dream to be able to have that succession family succession perpetuated for 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 many generations it doesn't always work um, uh, the the first generation normally funds and, and, and builds the second generation is is, is obviously uh, plays a different role in terms of the business once you get into the third and the fourth generations um, those individuals are so far removed from the the philosophies of the founder and 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 what happened it makes it much more challenging for third and fourth generation family businesses to to succeed but uh, I think every family's dream is to have that what is the philosophy of the founder and again we're referring to to dr. Fenter here yeah, his philosophy is not unlike I, what I've expressed. Uh, you know, he is he's passionate about family businesses. When when he stepped down in 2001 as chief executive, um, he. I think quite crazily decided he wanted at his age to go and study. So he did an MBA and subsequently a, a doctorate and, uh, and a master's. So he's been studying for the last seven or eight years. And, and, and uh, the thesis for his master's was in fact uh, family businesses, this, this, the, the success of family businesses and something came out very strongly, which, and, and this is really his philosophy, is the concept of familyness. Uh, and familyness is, is, a, is a concept which we perpetuate within our, our group. Um, I talk about it all the time, um, which is really that you don't have to have the Fenter family surname to be part, part of the family. The familyness should be thinking the same way as, as, as the family. So we, we impress upon our managers that the culture they should always take their decisions on is take your decisions as if you were an owner of the business. Take your decisions as if you were a shareholder uh, uh, such as the Fenter family in the business. Because if you're taking the decisions based on that, generally speaking, you're going to take, you won't always make the right decisions, but you'll be making the decisions for the right reasons. Um, so that concept of familyness is something we really try to pull through. And, and we've, we've got many executives that have been with us for many, many, many years um, at the senior level who, you know, really we consider almost to be part of the family. Um, and if you talk to them, uh, they'll, they'll say the same thing. Robbie, you've been at the helm of Ultron uh, since 2001, so it's coming on around about nine years now. And uh, the current economic environment is obviously incredibly tough. Many saying that it is the toughest economic environment that we've seen since World War I. Yeah. How has that weighed on you as the leader of your organization? Yeah, this, this last um, 18 months, 12 to 18 months has been certainly, in my view, the most difficult time um, that I've I've had to endure from a management perspective um, since I started with the group in 1990, some 20 years ago. And we've been through a lot of cycles during that period of time. And um, at the time, I was I was running PowerTech, so I went through some of the cycles um, that PowerTech went through. But nothing has been as as quick and as deep as as the as the downturn that we've seen in in, in this particular cycle um, not only in South Africa but but na but globally as well and that's required uh, a whole different mindset in terms of, of d decision making and it's required a to get the business cost wise to to its right level but also um, to take an approach that for for 10 years since I've been at the helmet at Altron that we never really had to do which is, is to manage the balance sheet you know we always had a very conservative balance sheet a lot of cash on it but we were able to 
go out, acquire businesses, buy businesses. Over the last 18 months, it's really been a, a, a case of reducing inventories, making sure that, that the debtors are, are, are carefully managed because bad debts in today's environment is a real problem. Uh, acquisitions effectively put on hold except for very, very spe special types of, of purposes and really extracting value and focusing inwardly into the business uh, as opposed to what for the last uh, 10 years or so has been very much an external focus. So that's really created a big change in, in kind of the areas of emphasis that, um, that we've had to manage. How through. quickly did you react? Well, I, I would like to think that we reacted uh, quicker than our competition and quicker than, than most. Um, at our interim statement uh, last year, um, we gave the first, uh, which was in August of uh, 2008, uh, in our prospect statement, um, we gave the first indications that we saw some cloudy weather ahead. Um, and we were relatively bearish in terms of our outlook statement. Um, when I went down to Cape Town for our uh, analyst uh, presentations and one-on-ones, um, there was a lot of comment around, well, you guys are being too bearish, you, you really are just being too bearish and, and it's, it's not as bad as what you guys think it is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we saw the order book. We could see the visibility, particularly in the power tech type businesses. We could see what was happening to resource prices, which, which we are somewhat vulnerable to, copper and the like. Um, and, you know, platinum being a big customer of ours, we could see what was happening. And um, we, having gone through the cycles before, knew that the, the best way to deal with that is to act quickly and take decisive action. As it turns out, we were not e even close to being corrected to how bad it was going to be. We were bearish, but uh, and others were not as bearish as us. But it actually turned out to be a lot harder and a lot tougher and a lot quicker than, than, than even at that half year that what we anticipated.